What's going on everybody? My name is Alex Freebring and in today's video we're going to be discussing the top five reasons why you should not become a data analyst. Now I am all for people becoming data analysts. I think it's a fantastic career and a great job to have. But there are some people who just should not be data analysts. Many years ago when I was first starting college I really wanted to become a doctor and so I went to school to become a doctor and started taking all the classes and investing a lot of time in order to make that happen. And then I got my first internship at an actual hospital and let me tell you that changed my mind completely on what I wanted to do with my life because I realized I did not handle blood well and apparently that's something that you kind of need to handle well in order to become a doctor. And so I was kind of at a crossroads of whether or not I really wanted to continue in that profession or I wanted to look elsewhere. And so if you're wondering if you should become a data analyst, here are some of the things that I think you should look out for for reasons why you might not want to become a data analyst. The first thing is that you're not a self-learner. You may need a lot of instruction or a lot of help in order to do specific tasks. And I think that might be a red flag for this career because you have to learn a ton on your own. Especially when you're first starting out and you're learning those core skills of SQL and Python and Excel, you are going to hit your head against your keyboard so many times because it is very difficult. But you really need to put in the time and the effort to become really good at it and proficient at it. And a lot of that time is going to be spent on your own actually learning it and not so much actually being taught it by somebody. And you're also going to have to do a lot of learning on the job. Even if you do learn those core skills, every single company is different and they're going to have lots of proprietary softwares or they're going to use different softwares that you've just never used before. And so you really just need to have that attitude of self-learning and being able to figure things out on your own. The second thing is you get frustrated very easily. Now there are a few things where my wife and I are very different and one of them is the way that we get frustrated. And so I am the type of person who I like to try every single option before I actually start getting frustrated at something. So take our baby for example. The baby cries a lot. And so when she's really fussy, I will try to swaddle her, I'll try to rock her, I'll walk her around, I'll walk her outside, I'll do lots of different things that I know have worked in the past. And then if all those things don't work, I might get a little frustrated. My wife will maybe try one or two of those things before she starts getting very frustrated and hands me the baby. Do not show my wife this video, but it is true. If you're going to have a job as a data analyst, you really need to have a high tolerance for frustration because you are going to run into a lot of stumbling blocks and a lot of issues along the way. And if you don't take them in stride, it can be very difficult to really accomplish what you're trying to get done. Whether that's debugging code or you're getting really frustrated because you can't get the right visualization or you're waiting on that coworker to send you something back that you've been waiting on for like three or four days that's really important but they just can't get it back to you. Those are all things that are going to be frustrating at times and so you really need to be able to take those in stride. The third thing is you hate doing hours of manual work. And I don't mean like building a house, I mean more like you don't automate something and so you actually have to do it by hand in order to get it done. So you're saving files, you're working in Excel, and you're doing all the transformation of this data by hand every single time. I mean, these things can get really tedious. At a previous job that I was working at, I would spend almost three or four days on one report for a client at the beginning of every single month because it was such a huge thing to actually automate and work with the programmers to do. We just decided it wasn't worth the investment. And so I had to do that every single month for three or four days. And it was a lot of work. It was a ton of manual work working in SQL and copying and pasting the data from SQL into Excel and then building the pivot tables and all the visualizations from that data. I really think I just didn't mind it because I was getting paid more than I thought I should be getting paid. So I was just more than happy to do really whatever they needed me to do. But to be honest, it was a lot of manual work and I could easily see somebody getting frustrated at that kind of work. The fourth thing is you don't like working with people. There are almost no data analyst jobs I can imagine that you don't work with people a lot. Even if it's a completely remote job, you're going to have to be messaging and emailing and video chatting a ton of people every single day. And so that is a really, really core thing that you need to be good at, which is communicating. Oftentimes you're going to be working on a team with managers or developers or other analysts just like you. And so you're going to be working with people a lot and talking about deadlines and projects and tasks and all of these things. You may also have to talk with clients about getting access to their data or resolving issues. And so again, that's just more face-to-face -face time with clients. Or you may have to work with third-party vendors where you're either buying software from them or getting data from them. In any case, you're working with a lot of people. And so if you don't like working with people in general, this may not be the career for you. Number five, which is our last one, is thinking that you're going to get really rich by being a data analyst. I think a lot of people look at the later stages of a career and see how much money they're making and think about all the money that they're going to make when they get into that career. But the truth is, is oftentimes when you first start out, you are not making a lot of money and you are not going to become rich quick. Oftentimes those mid-level or senior level positions do pay well, but when you're first starting out or even up to five or even 10 years in, you may be making under $70,000. I would not be expecting $120,000 or $150,000 anytime soon, but the people who do make that much are really focused on building their skills and building their domain knowledge and then later on in their career they do make that much. 
So I hope that this has helped you, and I hope that if any of those sound like you, that you'd really think about if you want to become a data analyst before you invest the time, effort, and money. And so it is a big investment, and so I hope that this does help you in the long run. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you want to support this channel, you can find my Patreon link in the description. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.